Okay, just tidying up after a slight sinking earlier in the day and uh, one of the things I thought I might share with you is just the uh, waterproofing method of uh, the servos that I'm using. So we've got a, a standard servo, this particular one's the rudder servo out of a Discovery and of course as we all know Discovery 500s are really good at sinking, it's one of their shining things. Other tools that I've got is the trusty Swiss Army knife, just an ordinary Phillips screwdriver some nice wet area silicon sealer that I find real beaut. I've also got this little doodad here that I'll show you later which is a, uh, a servo exercise tester and this is just a El Cheapo battery pack 4 AA's to power the whole setup. First thing we do is uh, have a close look at the servo. This particular servo uh, is uh, got just got four screws up through it that hold it together and it then splits into two parts. This little plate comes off the bottom that you can see there and it also splits through that point with a gearbox above it. Okay, so firstly we're going to just split it at the gearbox there, through there, open him up and you can see some of the gears there and there's the rest of it there. The items of interest that are, that are here, uh, that's just the primary drive gear, the motor is actually under there. That one there is the potentiometer that tells the actual servo where it is. Um, on this piece there's just a reduction drive train set and we're going to pay close attention firstly to this one here. That's the shaft that goes through the top as you can see and I'm going to take that one out. Okay, got the gear out now came from there, down in there you can see that um, there's a semicircle let's just try that, that there's a semicircle in that area and you can see that the servo is only going to rotate to the limit of those mechanical stops and it can't go any further otherwise it'll get tangled up with the gears on the underside of this piece which has decided to run away on the underside of this piece you can see that little knob there Oop. let's try that on the underside of this piece you can see if the camera would focus on the underside of this piece you can see just in this area here On the underside of this piece, you can see in that area there, that's the little piece sticking up. If I show you side on, it's, uh, that's uh, a little raised piece, and that runs it runs into the stops on the other on the other uh, section of the case. So it's important that the orientation of that's in the right place. Now to water to waterproofing this particular area. The idea is we're going to stop water coming in around the shaft. To waterproof the shaft. Uh, all we need is a smear of grease on the, the uh, appropriate surface around there and hey presto here is a some grease that I've uh, got on my finger because that's just the way to apply it straight out of my trusty grease gun right grease is now applied all the way around I've made an effort to not get any in the gear itself I wonder if it might be a tiny bit there but the idea is that there other, there's other light grease already here this grease is just purely there for waterproofing and it's going to waterproof it through that hole there, up through the case to the outside world. Time now to reassemble. Now as part of the reassembly of the top section, um, you will notice that I have the plus shape in the uh, main drive gear, uh, uh, aligned as it should be. I've also made a point of making sure that this potentiometer shaft here is in that direction and not like that or oops, or like that if it is clearly it's not going to it's not going to line up and then we're going to have grief so putting back to the correct position which is pretty much straight the other gear that's here the one floating around on top uh, there, uh, obviously that that gear goes on to that axle there as they go together. That little raised area there 
if we come down over the side we can sort of see that it's raised up that's where the main drive gear from the motor inside is uh, and that fits up inside that gear there okay putting it back together as part of the reassembly uh, we take the notice the location of the little tab sticking up around the side of the gear there and make sure that it's pointing towards that end of the of the case pointing away from the other gears and all we're going to do is turn it over pop it in the hole now I've got the gear back into the case again you will notice a cross section there, a plus shaped section there uh, the plus shaped section should be exactly aligned so that the uh, it's uh, well pretty much where it is shall we say and you can just just wind the gear train a bit to uh, to make it so that it is in exactly the right place don't forget that keep that right otherwise you'll have terrible trouble trying to put it together if you have everything correctly aligned you can actually pop the servo together and you'll see that it will go together completely like that no, that there's no no gap whatsoever at uh, at that point and it should be the same all the way around of course uh, so we can see that he's pretty much together that's what we need there okay now to the bottom of the servo we need to do some work on that area as well for waterproofing because we've now effectively waterproofed that shaft with grease As part of the reassembly process, it's probably just prudent to make sure that the servo actually works and will exercise correctly. So this is where we come to the old cheapo battery box with just four AA cells. This excellent little tester with the world's most brilliant light. It's incredible how bright that light is. As you can see, it's called something or other, a consistency master. It's um, just a few dollars from Hobby King. Battery goes in that side, make sure you get it the right way around. It's, uh, it's not hard. Not positive and negative in there. And coming out that side, positive, neg negative and signal. <clears throat> as well as the blinding blue light, there is also a nice little invisible push button there called select. So at the at the moment it's in the neutral position which is the center light in the three positions that it can be in. Um, as we, we push the little button it cycles through the three so that, that one exercises the servo back and forward. That one puts it under control of the, the knob and that one puts it in the neutral position. The thing that we're interested in here of course is that the servo should turn that, that exercise, it doesn't actually take it at all the full travel, but most of it. But if we get in the, the one where the knob does, uh, you can go from end to end and you can make sure that the servo actually travels as you'd expect. So that's proven that the servo seems to be functional. It's now time to finalise the assembly. Okay, now remove the uh, bottom of the, of the servo, so exposed the electronics. A couple of things to note here, firstly on this cover, that cover is not the same at both ends. That cover has a small cutout in that end. If we turn it over like so you can see, and that cutout end lines up with that uh, grommet that the cable comes in through. Okay. One of the things that I like to do in this area with electronics uh, is a squirt of CRC or some other uh, waterproofing spray agent. Don't no need to overdo it and go stupid, just a bit. I've previously dosed this one with a bit of CRC 556 because that was what I happened to have about. Uh, other than that, the other thing that we're going to do is that we're going to add some silicon sealant on both this joint and also the joint between the gearbox and the, the uh, main body. So in order to waterproof uh, this particular area, the first place to consider waterproofing is around this cable. Now this cable, there is a little slot there at the bottom. You can see the residue of some previous waterproofing I've done there that I'm going to clean off in a moment. also need to waterproof 
uh, where the cable actually goes into that grommet as well, so where, where the actual wires go in at this point here, this, at this point here. Uh, I've dabbed a bit of sealing, sealant around that uh, that group that groove there, and we now seat the grommet down in there. Obviously, I can't do that with one hand, so I'm going to do it with two. Now I've got the uh, grommet seated there. As you can see, it's uh, sitting in a, uh, in a quite an area of uh, silicon. Finish up with far too much silicon. Uh, I'm now going to put the lid on, but I'm not going to not going to screw it down completely. I'm going to screw, no, add the screws, but not tighten anything up yet. So, as part of the sealing up assembly, uh, I've assembled it, but I've got the screws left undone, so a couple of millimetres. Uh, so you can see that there's just a little bit of room there. The idea is that we're now going to uh, spring the case apart. Um, just pop the knife in there like that and we're going to spring it apart. Okay, now I've got the case spread apart a little bit. Next thing to do will be to uh, dab a bit of silicon around there and to put make sure that there's a, a line of silicon in that gap all the way around the server. Okay, you can now see that there's a nice line of silicon in the gap all the way around. Don't get the gap too big because you don't want silicon in the gears. It will cause you enormous problems in the gears. And now that we've got it right around there, obviously I've just put it on and smeared it around with my finger. It's uh, this ain't rocket science. But the important part is that now when we squeeze the uh, squeeze it together a bit, you can see how it squeezes out all the way around. That's what we want. I'm going to take off the surplus. I'm then going to open up the little gap around the bottom plate in that area there. And I'm going to repeat the performance there. So we now have the line of silicon all around that one there. I've taken a little bit off the, uh, off the other one up in the gearbox joint. Now when we squeeze him together, squeeze the sandwich and the cream comes out. like that. As you can see it's, well, it's a rather messy operation, it's uh, going to waterproof it very nicely. Now I'll just clean up the excess and leave a film uh, over each of the joins as the plan. So there we are, pretty much finished I think. Um, you can see the smear of silicon around the two joins, it's not real pretty but it's very very effective. Uh, also spent a put, put in a, a good bit of effort around there just uh, with that cable to make sure that uh, that's all nicely sealed. Yeah. This method works for me uh, if you finish up for any reason with the servo underwater the servo will continue to work. Simple as that. It's fairly messy at this stage but if you leave it alone for a while the uh, silicon hardens off and you finish up with quite a reasonable surface and it, uh, it isn't too messy to put back on the boat. Well, it's not messy at all. And why would you bother doing this? After all, it's only a cheap boat, isn't it? Well, it isn't. Uh, it might be a cheap boat, but you've invested a lot of time in it and you wouldn't want one dead servo to ruin all your fun. <laughs>